Hello and welcome to Armburger Smackdown at todaysfinancialnews.com. I'm Jay Christoph Armburger. During the Cold War, my mother's family lived locked up securely behind the Iron Curtain in that socialist paradise on earth they euphemistically called the German Democratic Republic. Accordingly, I was exposed to real-life socialism at an early age. My mother, a straight-A student, as she never tired to point out, had been denied a university education because her mother owned a restaurant. As the communists put it, the educational privilege of the property-owning classes had been broken. My uncle and cousins had to inform the state security on every visit our family made, and my father was detained at the border a couple of times, one time for having a contraband newspaper wedged in the backbench of his rental car. Don't be surprised that no one in my family was a real fan of socialism. And still, we'd get the occasional whiff of the totalitarian propaganda that had turned our cousins into petty informers. Simply because, if, apart from books printed on bad paper, there really wasn't much my East German relatives could send to us children in capitalist West Berlin. I remember that the children's books produced by the communists in East Germany all had a ver valuable lesson attached. They reinforced the need to conform to the tenets of Marxism-Leninism, of class struggle, and of sta state-mandated collectivism. Mothers in these books were all burly tractorists in people-owned agricultural collectives, imparting to their offspring the dangers of capitalism and individualism, and constantly shaking angular fists with the equally burly soldiers from the victorious Red Army. You'd think that pious nonsense would have come to an end when communism collapsed onto itself back in 1989. But you'd underrate the conservatism, or as they call it in Germany, Eastalgia of collectivist ideologists. The most blatant and shameless incarnation of Cold War-style socialist indo indoctrination of children I found recently is a book called Why Mommy is a Democrat. Author Jeremy Zilber intends to help parents communicate important political values to their children and believes that this book reflects his passion for progressive politics, sense of humor, and his academic training in fields such as political psychology and socialization. It sure does. So does his choice of one Julia Fersova as an illustrator who apparently learned her trade as a, in, in the pre-Glasnost Soviet Union, illustrating books for young pioneers of the glorious farmers and laborers state. It would explain the somewhat anti-Semitic aura given off by the evil capitalist slash Republican who features in every cartoon a mixture between the millionaire from Gilligan's Island and Jude Zeus. The, the saccharine morality tales involve a cartoon squirrel mother and two cartoon squirrel children, demonstrating how living in lockstep with liberal mantras creates paradise on earth. Where East Germany's tractorist matron would quote the party as the source of all wisdom, the politically correct squirrel mom invokes Democrat mantras. A re reviewer on Amazon.com sums up the message quite succinctly. This beautiful picture book teaches children that mommy government will solve all your problems and is always there with another suckle at the government teat. One day soon mommy gov government will control everything, like, just like she does in North Korea, and a wonderful risk-free utopia will blossom where every day is a happy ending. If you as much has warmed a chair for 10 minutes in English Lit 101, there are certain things that do become quite obvious in this book. As one reviewer put it, it seems the ideal nuclear family to Democrats is a Democrat mommy with her children. No fathers here and none necessary. Certainly not. After all, it takes a village to raise a child. The attitude toward private property is, equal, is quite similar to that of previous collectivists. Democrats make you share your toys. Not that sharing is bad, as every Republican parent will agree. But you can only make someone share if you consider his property yours, or the government's, if you're the parent, or the nanny, or the nanny state, an entity diametrically opposed to the individual and individualism. Now, my eagle eyes have detected a far more nefarious thing in one of those cartoons. Take a look. Surprised that nobody has picked up on it yet. Look at it closely. 
Is it just me or do the blocks, the brave young pioneer squirrels are playing with, as that callous millionaire and his wife saunter by, actually spell out do part? As one of my highly respected associates in the office put it, you know, the thing about subliminals is that they say more about your brain than the message. But it's fun just the same. For today's financialnews.com, I'm J. Christoph Armberger. Oh,